Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two of the Pro League replay cast. If you haven't seen part one, I'll put a link to it here on this first page. We've got all Zerg team versus Terran and Protoss mix team right now. I don't know exactly how the teams were chosen, but I assume it's random as that's how it is these days in current pro league it's completely random just like round number one where the players were randomly selected the matchups were randomly selected however here in round number two it's going to be a king of the hill format where we've got action being sent out first versus organ another best of seven here guys so plenty of games to go make sure to hit the subscribe button hit the like button as well definitely helps me out Leave your comments which games you think were the best as well. You can pop off in that algorithm. Hopefully more people will see this and... Hopefully we can get some more replays like this as well. It's always a blast to watch some Pro League. Even if we have to watch it um, on a VOD of one of the streamers, it's, it's still a blast. But this is just a, a special treat here. To be able to get the replays for ourselves. We can analyze them. We can watch them. Without uh, hearing a bunch of Korean chatter in the background. It's just. It's a very nice experience. I can take things a little bit slow. One thing about those Korean. Pro gamers. Is even when they're watching a replay. I know I spam click a little bit. And uh, you know box select a little bit too much. But. Uh, the Korean pros man. They really move their screen around a ton. They're just clicking on everything. They're so used to having what we've got right here, which is 500 APM on action. I'll see if he actually keeps that up or not. Because 500 APM is kind of insane when you're not really doing too much. Uh, just keeping his hands warm here, it seems. And we're going to be playing this out on the map that we saw actually from the last uh, series from round one. It's uh, stream. Something stream. I can't even remember now. Um, flow stream. I can't. I uh, honestly, I can't remember. It's a bit of an older map. It has the neutral ground between main and natural, and then a high ground natural. So that's the big aspect of this map that's important here. It's a lot like um, the other map that I mentioned, Tempest. A lot like Tempest. Maybe a few more bases on this map, though. Uh, and you've got this little high ground over top of your natural. It's like action. Just going to be camping out over here. And you should be able to get into a safe position with this overlord without taking too much damage, of course. Oregon going to try and push that away. But the drone is going to come in here. No, it's actually going to head all the way back home now. Lings are out on the field. Let's see if he throws down a sunken colony. Has he sussed this out yet? Because there is an there there is a chance that he won't actually figure this out. Now uh, that there's a vulture on the way here. The vulture is just about out and we don't have any sunken colony. This is going to be a little bit rough of a hold here for action. Now you can stand on top of the ramp and make it hard for the vulture to come up, which could potentially buy you a lot of time. But he's actually moving out right now with his lings and that's a bad situation. Where are we going with these lings? I'm not entirely sure. Six lings are going to head out on the map. Four more just arrive here. Oh, it's going to jump right on top of that. See, this is what I'm talking about. Having the high ground natural means it's a lot harder to poke up there with the vulture. So the vulture is actually going to head back home now. And a lot of lings have been made right now. Z Zergling speed is just about finished up. The vulture is going to run up to the north. Do we have a full wall? And I believe this is completely ling tight. So he should be okay here. A really good move by Oregon. No, no, no. Okay, never mind. That's not Link tight. I totally forgot that that wasn't Link tight. My bad, guys. Um, only one Link can get on top of this Vulture, though. Out of time, unless he moves it. Oh, my goodness. He cannot be moving that right now. He's going to end up losing this Vulture. Vulture does go down. Links are going to stream in here. This was almost a perfect hold, really, from Oregon. But, I mean, he will clean it up in the end. However, he did lose a few SCVs. I'm a little bit embarrassed. I thought that this was Ling Tight, but that is not Ling Tight. <laughs> it's 
It's Supply Depot over Supply Depot or under Supply Depot and over top of the barracks. Those are the Ling Tight wall ins. I can't remember exactly what it is. I think it's like the corner of the factory if it's touching the uh, barracks. I can't remember that wall in exactly, but this wall in I definitely know. So don't be too harsh on me in the comments. We've got Spire finished now, but this has been a serious. Uh, commitment here from action. You can see his drone count incredibly low. We've only got three drones here at the natural. Do we have the e eBay? That's uh, just about done here. Gonna pop out a, a Goliath or two and has a bunker here ready to fight. But the Mutas are on the way. Three are gonna arrive here. Can action start to pull this position apart? It's gonna be a little bit tough. There's not a lot of Mutas. But the turrets here are late. With the lateness of the turrets, this is a really big problem for Piano. Let's see how much damage he can do. Well, he gets a couple of SCVs here so far. But now Vultures are going to come running in here to the natural. They cannot make it by those Lings and Sunken. More drones have been produced. So not really making more Mutas right now. He's only got five total. And switches back into full-on drone production. So... Let's see what kind of damage he can do in here with just five mutas. He can't really one-shot right now. One-shotting is out of the question. He's got to take two swipes. And that means that the turret is going to get a lot of extra damage on this. He does get about two, three SCVs. So total like four or five. It's not the worst. But you need a lot of damage when you've been this, this uh, light on drones for this long. Looks like another drone going to head out on the map here pretty soon. Oh, he does spot those uh, vulture bikes. We'll start to catch those. Just a little bit of health left on them. And now that he knows where they are, he knows that he can send this drone out without too much issue. Try to find his way down to the bottom right. I guess that's where he's going. That actually might get cut off here. This vulture is very fast. He's going to come all the way down here and maybe catch this drone right as it's approaching. I think he just saw it. He should have seen it with the retreating vision here. Um, ah, he just barely doesn't catch that. That is too bad. Too bad for Oregon. Action here. Going to be very happy getting that hatchery down. Um, he will be wary though, I think. He probably saw that that was under attack. So he should know that vultures are in the area. And when he transfers drones, he's going to have to be really careful with them. Coming in for some more harassment here. Gets two SCVs, not a third. This is a Muta. Takes a lot of damage here from those Goliaths. So this is starting to get worse and worse in terms of the harassment. It's not going to get much better. Um, the Goliaths are now out in high enough number and they have that care on booster upgrade to where it's probably not going to be worth it really to fly in and just snipe a couple of SCVs anymore. You're going to take too much damage on the way out. So it's time to decide on the transition point. Burrow is going to be upgraded right now. I guess that makes sense considering we don't have, you know, that armory. And with no armory, or excuse me, no academy. No academy. There's not going to be any scans. Man, this mining really sucks right here. But, you know, we're oversaturated anyway. It's not the biggest deal in the world. A lot of mutas being made and armor. So, I think we're just going to see a straight up mutalist game here. Just endless, endless mutas being pumped out. And trying to fight the Goliaths head on. We'll see how that goes for action. Actually, I'm going to catch one of the vultures. Another vulture here. Might end up catching a drone or two. All right. He sees the lings here. Drones heading over to the bottom right. They're actually going to make it there uh, safely. Which is a bit of a surprise. A vulture still being a threat out here on the map. Finally, we'll get caught. And now the map is actually clear here for action he can start to uh, move into the next phase and transfer a bunch of drones Ooh, back into barracks switch here from organ this is a pretty nasty play i i actually really like it um if they go into lurker it can be really hard uh, but that's really what you need right now if you go hydra or muta which is the typical response to goliaths then you're going to get bashed very, very hard with by this Marine Medic switch. 
And as you can see, he's actually keeping all of his Goliaths right around this area. So in case the Mutalists fly in, he's going to be able to stop them from immediately scouting this. Now, pops out all the medics first. Start to gather that energy here. Um, Mutas are looking around, kind of checking things out. I don't know if he's going to fly right in here. He might. He's actually going to fly in here. He can't really see anything right now. I don't really know what's going on. He's checking at the edges. He's checking at the peri peripheries. Okay, he's going to go in. Try to trade out with some of these Goliaths right now. The Goliaths are fighting. And the Marines are going to start to show themselves. Here comes the Marines with the stim. As soon as he sees that, we should see a Hydralis Den started. Or at least... Okay. Hydralis Den is already done. So Aspect starts immediately. Great response here from Action. Had he just stayed outside and not engaged with the Goliaths... Uh, we might have seen him not start that aspect and he would have been in a lot of trouble. So, a uh, great heads up play here from Action to just go ahead and engage that army to figure out, you know, maybe it's not the best engagement in the world, but just to get that information. What are you actually doing? What exactly is coming out here? Is it just pure Goliath? Is it, um, you know, up mech? Are we switching into bio? What is what is happening right now? And he finds out that information. Now he can make the proper adjustments. He's going to go into Queen's Nest. He's going to get that uh, Lurker aspect done. And he's going to continue to harass here into the main base to try and keep the Marines and Goliaths back at home. And he's doing a great job of it so far using like two, maybe three groups of Mutas here. He's got quite a lot of them. I wonder what he'll go into. I, I mean, he can't really go into... Uh, Guardians, right? We've got armor. And plus one attack. Uh, and we're gonna have Hive here. So, you could go into Guardians, but they're just not good against Goliaths, unfortunately. Funny that he killed this. Um, he killed that Supply Depot instead of killing the Egg or the Supply Depot on the right. I feel like either choice would have been better, but it is what it is. He goes after that one. Mutas are just buying time right now because six Lurkers are on the way. Lurkers on high ground with Sunken Colony. You think that's going to be um, fightable as Goliath Man with a few Marines? I don't think so. I think this is going to be a pretty solid hold here from action. And we're going to have to see Organ transition into something else. Uh, I think. I think that's what we're going to see here. He's uh, having a hard time keeping all of his army together, which is understandable considering how much army there is right now. Ooh, a Lurker landmine here. Almost catching a bunch of units, but actually Oregon is choosing to uh, target this base down here instead. We've only got one Lurker on that high ground. Can he actually break through here? Kill the Lurker. He does get the Lurker. Two more Lurkers pop out. They are going to burrow. There's only one sunken colony though. He's using the Mutas to stand over top of the Lurker so the Lurker can get maximum damage. Don't allow the Marines to target that down. He is going to try and target it, but there he is. He just kills off the Marines that are coming up the ramp and then backs away with the Mutas. He wastes a lot of Mutas here, but was it really a waste? He manages to hold on to this high ground, which is the main point here. As long as he keeps a hold of this area, he's going to be all right. Lurker is going to have to back away as the scan comes down. A fourth base is likely to be started here soon. And we are just completely on the back foot now as Organ. I think he's going to go into like tank, tank Marine, um, and try to play it out from that angle. I'm not sure how that's going to work. He does have plus one already, so the tanks are going to be extra strong at this point in the game. But it's just not looking good here. Action is going to be able to take his fourth with little resistance here. As soon as Defilers come out, there's no way, absolutely no way that Organ can break through. Two tanks are going to make their way to the front. Consume about 20% done. Can he actually come up here and do anything before this consume finishes? I think it's unlikely, but let's see. Action. Moving this Lurkers to the front here. Wants to get them right up on top of that high ground. Make it as hard as possible to break through. But maybe the tanks can get some splash going on this. Consume is almost done here. Mutas are going to go around the side right now. Maybe snipe the tanks. There we go. Siege up here. Going to target the middle Lurker. So it actually does damage to the upper Lurker as well. 
really good targeting here to just do as much damage as possible to all of these lurkers. Doesn't actually end up killing many of them, but does deal a lot of damage. A lot of sunkins are being made right now just to make sure that, just to 100% ensure here that action is able to hold on. Now throwing down that Dark Storm, he's gonna run forward with the lurkers, get in range of these tanks, deal a little damage. Looks like he won't get any of them, but he manages to push everything away and he starts his fourth base. Action playing this out beautifully. He's gonna be able to just kind of sit back now with Plague on the way, with drop defenses set up and arrayed around his main base. He's gonna be sitting pretty here while he changes into his next layer of tech. That's gonna be Ultras. Ultras are gonna be coming down here soon. Getting some good kills with these Lurkers. And a lot of damage on these units. One armor is done. So the Lurker's no longer going to be two-shotting here, unfortunately. Tanks here, just chilling. We can't really push anywhere, but we can take bases. We can start to put bases out around the map. Organ has that pressure right now. Can't really do too much with it. This is just pure Marine going down here. That's like a 12 stack of Marine. Just heading down towards uh, bottom center, I guess. Definitely not optimal to send pure Marine with no medic support, but it's not going to cost him anything here. Okay, never mind. He loses a bunch of the Marines there. Getting to mining over here at the 12 o'clock now. One medic working away over there, keeping those SCVs alive and healthy. Uh, let's see if he can connect on his first vessel. Looks like not. Everything going to back up here. We'll be able to hold this high ground. But at any time, we could see another Irradiate come, or another Dark Storm come down. So he needs another Irradiate to actually deal with that. Meanwhile, drops are being loaded up right now. Organ is going to go for a Hail Mary play here. A Lotto Ship play, if you will. Let's see if he can make it happen. Looks like a drone just got consumed. He doesn't want to allow this uh, Dark Storm to lapse here. Otherwise, the Lurkers will die. So he's got to keep... Are putting down that Dark Swarm over and over and over again. Looks like he's going to miss mess it up just for a second. He loses a Lurker. Meanwhile, drops coming down into the bottom right. We've got two Scourge that are ready and waiting. Looks like he's going to get the unload, though, without any uh, of those Scourge connecting. Okay, one Scourge does connect, but the other dies. And he's going to go right after the Nidus Canal. This Nidus Canal is huge. He gets the kill on the Nidus. Backing away just in the nick of time here to avoid the Lurker Spines, and he will kill this fourth base. Basically, no matter what action, really can't do anything about it. He is on the ropes now, with Ultras finally popping out, but they're just moments too late. Armor uh, 2 is not done, by the way. I don't know what is taking that Armor 2 so long, but it is on the way now. And Chitinous Plating is about to finish. He should be able to clean this up with the Dark Swarm and the, the Ultras here, but... He's taking a lot of damage because these are not the most armored ultras at this point. Ooh, he snipes a defiler as well. Hold on a second. We actually got a bunch of drones down here. So at least managing to save a bunch of the drones. Honestly, not the worst here for action. Wait a second. That's a pretty bad trade. Okay. He will get through that. Medic, start to clear this out. Pretty annoying stuff here from Piano. Just hiding behind the mineral patches. But it is what it is. Action here. Under a lot of pressure. While Oregon is taking multiple bases around the map. He's really expanding quickly. And there's not really anything that Action can do about it just yet. Except send this little tiny group of Lings around the map. Which likely won't get anything done. A target fire or an irradiate on this Defiler would be massive. But unfortunately, Dark Swarm landing right here on the front. Everything going to get shoved back. Action. Pushing things back now. Can he recover from this point? It's hard to imagine it really happening. A uh, hatchery gets started down here. And he finally clears out all of the marines. Oh, a big plague here. I'm going to change the color. I can't change the color. Big, big plague there on all of Oregon's stuff. That is rough. Muta's moving through the middle of the map here. Just looking for any damage he can do. Maybe go towards 12 o'clock or something. Start killing off. No, I can't really kill off anything. There's so many Marines everywhere. Oh my gosh. 
A lot of defenses here, ready to fight. All these marines are super, super low, but you actually do need to put the uh, ultra on attack move if you want them to do any damage. Muta's flying through here right now. But there's bunkers, there's marines already. We need a defiler up here if we want to make something happen. So he does bring the defiler up. In fact, sending two just for good measure. I know that's one. Other one's just going to stand there. Where are those dropships? They're still here. Organs found himself in a position where he's actually content with the way that the game state is right now. He doesn't need to attack. As long as he holds these bases in the top right, he's going to be happy. Now, he does see that the Defiler is coming. And so, with the Defiler on the way... Uh, okay, the Marine's just going to stand there. That's kind of funny. He did stim that, but... Uh, now the Dark Swarm going to come down, and this bunker should die. Yeah, two Dark Swarms here. That's pretty rough. Some... The Radiants go down on the Defilers here at the front. Maybe if he sieges up tanks here, he can actually hit the Nidus Canal. Maybe we can make something happen. Meanwhile, the attack over here... Doing some work against this bunker. I think we've got uh, something repairing that, though. No, we don't. Probably run into this other bunker. There's plenty of bunkers around. Um, to run into. Uh, another Nidus over here. Um, that's why we're still holding on at this point. Action hitting this base right now. He's trying to attack the Ultra, but... Actually, SCVs don't attack under Dark Storm. They have range of zero. They are still considered a ranged unit. It's like Ultra's gonna come down here. Another great Dark Storm just to clear out these tanks. This is a really clutch Dark Storm and a great Plague as well, dude. Action is such a great Defiler user. It's kind of crazy. He's gonna get so much value here out of his units just because he's able to keep keep the spells coming at the right times here uh, throughout this match. And Organ, I mean, he's in such a good spot. It's hard to uh, imagine action coming back but he's kind of doing it like he's kind of hanging in there he's got his fourth gas online he could take a fifth i mean he's got this base in the center right if he could establish this as well then i mean we can still make this into a really great game it's like ultra just kind of running in over here and dying oh uh, and vessels looking for more damage let's see if they get plagued i think they will there should be a huge plague. Yeah, there you go. That is a massive plague on everything. And 3-3 three, three should be done. Or 3 armor should be done. Wait, we don't have armor. Oh my god. Guys, how many times have we seen a game like this? Where things are getting really hectic and the Zerg player just completely forgets 3 armor. Uh, I feel like we've seen Jadong do it a few times. We've seen multiple players do it a few times. But action here, just no armor. It's so brutal. He's going to trade so poorly against the three attack marines. And then all of the, the tanks as well are just going to do so well against this. Uh, and he could really be trading pretty decently with the ultras, but he just can't. He absolutely cannot do it. Big plague here in the center of all this army. Oh my goodness. They are going to rip this stuff apart here. Does target down the one Muta. Kind of a clutch play there by Oregon just to keep all of his science vessels alive because so many of them have been plagued here. A lot of them have already been taken out, but he's keeping the rest of them alive right now. Another great plague could come down right here. However, not paying attention. Action. Okay, there we go. He does throw down the plague eventually. But he's kind of stifled right now. There's an army coming down to the center right. And it's probably going to end up taking out this gas at least, if not the whole base entirely. We're running up here with the lurkers. Going to be able to get a lot of kills on these marines, it looks like. But at the same time, losing the base in the center right, it's just not a good comparison. He actually needs to bail out of here with all these drones. Otherwise, they're just going to die. Um, wait a minute. Okay, all it's just going to come up here. Can he actually clear this? That would be kind of crazy if he was able to hold on to this base. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. Look at how quickly Ultralis dissolve. Um, when, okay, there's the armor just started. You can see that Action realizes it. Um, after he starts the armor, he taps out. He taps GG. It's just you're never going to trade well in these late game situations. Uh, with the Terran having this many bases and having the upgrade advantage, it's just not going to happen. 
Um, you're already kind of trading at a deficit anyway, as they're pretty much in every matchup. So you have to be um, at least on par with the upgrades here at this point. It's it's really unfortunate, man. Action played a great game. He did hang on for a long time, but definitely outshining him here. Oregon with some great tank play, a cool uh, mix up with the Goliath Marine play. It got scouted by action, but it didn't matter. He was still able to pull through, uh, even from kind of a, a weird position where he wasn't able to deal any damage with that Marine Goliath play. He still managed to switch it up into a tank play that actually did very, very well. Very impressed with Oregon here. He's going to move on. He's going to stay on the court here, and action will have to sub out for another one of these Zerg players. Who's it going to be? We're about to find out. Okay, game number two here. Oregon continuing on and going up against Soma. Guys, I just want to mention this video is going to be sponsored by Neon Marble Rust. We're going to have a little advertisement after this game. But I want to mention that they have a brand new race out. It's finally Marble has been released. And I was trying them out on stream last week. I'm going to be trying them out again. Uh, probably this week as well, this weekend. Uh, so come by and check out the... The, the Twitch stream or on YouTube live as well. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, Neil Marlboros is it, it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a completely different race. There's a bunch of different uh, new resources as well for that race. Uh, it operates completely differently. Kind of similar to StarCraft, right? All the races are different. They all function differently. They all have their power spikes and their um, you know pros and cons. But uh, we're just kind of learning it. Brand new. And I just thought I'd let you guys know that that's happening right now into the game, guys. Soma here in the bottom left. This is long before his uh, military service, of course. This is right after his loss to Queen in the finals of ASL and that ZVZ finals. If you guys remember, he was on the top of his game right at this point. And he's going to be taking on Oregon, who on paper probably shouldn't be able to hold a candle to Soma uh, at this juncture but he just took out action which is pretty impressive no action no slouch and Oregon taking him out there looked pretty darn good let's see what he can do against Soma who's actually opened up with a pool here it's done for some sort of over pool build which is very popular in today's meta in 2024 but uh, back in this this time, it wasn't that popular. 2021 was um, really all about the 12 or 11 hatch. Uh, mostly the 12 hatch. And, you know, we we're kind of getting started with the 2.5 hatch meta, I think. I can't quite remember exactly when that came in. But it was definitely more so tilted towards the... Um, uh, f fast hatchery plays like the 12 hatch. So let's see what someone wants to bring out here. Maybe he's going to go for a just straight up really, really fast spire here. He's already got the gas going. Really doesn't have a lot of uh, workers here. He's got six lings going across the map. And he's going to start that layer here in just a second. There it is. Layer's going to start right at three minutes. That three minute layer is going to give him a very fast middle timing. And this is kind of the old Soma, right? This is this is 2021 Soma. This is the guy that we know and, uh, and remember. Uh, back then, he was very much a two hatch muta all in player. He used to do two hatch muta all in almost every single game against Terran. He was very good at the control of the Mutalis and not a whole lot else. Like, he was still pretty darn good in the mid and late game, but. His real point when he shined, where he really looked dominant and strong, was with his Mutalist timings and his control with the Mutalist. Now, in 2024, he's not as much that type of player. Like, he still does control Mutalist insanely well, but he doesn't rely on it as heavily anymore uh, as he once did back in this time. So, you know, we'll see how heavy someone wants to rely on this. Is he going to make a third base? Is he going to, you know, drone too much uh, after this? He does get speed, at least. And his Spire is going to start here. 
So we're gonna see like a five minute 30 pop of the mutilus. Like it's gonna be fast, maybe five minute 40. Um, but it's gonna be before six minutes here, which is your regular mutilus timing. And it is cross map. So any sort of mutilus play is not gonna be as strong. Like the timings are never gonna be as strong. A few more drones getting added on here and there. But I don't know if he's going to go for the third. Okay, the drone does go up to the top left. So he will be taking a third over there in that top left. Adding on even more drones here. He should be starting an overlord in a moment. We're at that almost five minute mark here. The Spire is just about to finish up. Now taking a look at Organ. Going for four racks. Interesting. Horex hasn't been as popular lately, but it was very popular back in uh, actually really like 2023, 2022 as well as 2021. Um, it's more so about the three racks with the fa faster factory, but where is that eBay? Oh boy. I really feel like the eBay is a little bit late here. All right. It's a little, little bit slower than I thought. Um, five minute 40, maybe five minute... 50 really is this am i that far off i really thought it was going to be a little bit faster than this maybe i misjudged here yeah 545 550 okay it pops out at 550 just 10 seconds faster than normal mutilus pop um i thought he could get it out faster with the uh, overpool build but i guess i'm wrong we've got you know, six meters heading across the map. Five meters here, actually. Six right there. Uh, not enough to one-shot uh, drones just yet, but maybe enough to take on this little marine force. I'm not sure. It definitely stops some turrets that may be going up right now. Yeah, there's no turrets in the main. Oh, man. If you flew into the main right now, he could get so much damage done. But instead, he's going to fight the marines, which is a little bit disappointing here. He could have definitely gotten some really good damage. Uh, but he, maybe he can just snipe all of the marines here. Look at this control. Bring in the lings from behind as well. Gonna snipe down all of these marines one by one. Just targeting them down. Great control here overall. Unfortunately, won't get that last marine. But he's got another group of mutas just joining the party here. Gonna start to take this fight. Diving here. Towards the bunker, of course, that's not going to be a good plan. So he backs away, taking more shots on these Marines. Just great control here. A lot of these are very low, though. The Mutalists are getting quite, quite low. Not a lot of energy left on these Medics, by the way. They are uh, running out of that resource. And now diving in here to the main with seven Mutas. How many can he one-shot before he loses a Muta here? That's three, four, five... Six, seven, eight, eight total meters. And the Marines are just heading up towards the top left. Piano doesn't care. He says, uh, okay, fine. You can kill those uh, workers, but I'm going to go ahead and just start banging at your top right, top left. Sorry. Oh, the Mutas almost flying into that big group of Marines there. That would have been bad. But he manages to pull everything together, and this is enough. This is enough to fight. So I'm going to clear this up, I think. Um... Two Marines, three Marines going to break off and head up towards the top left. So they might be able to kill a few extra drones, but the Mutalists are already on the way here. Maybe two drones go down here. One, two. And the rest of the Marines are going to head back home. That was a smart choice by Oregon. If he had actually sent the, those remaining Marines up this ramp, everything would have died there. But now he's got a pretty sizable group. I don't think you're going to want to fight this straight up against... Um, you know, Marines against the, these Mutas here. How many turrets do we have in the main? Not a lot. Not a lot of turrets at all. He's just relying on counterattacks being a threat. Because if you dive on top of these barracks, there's not much that Piano can do. He might end up regretting that, actually. Two groups of Mutas now. Not fully, you know, not, not a full 11 on two groups, but he's now able to swap out injured Mutas. Uh, in order to, you know, resupply here. He's going to dive on top with all the Mutas now. Bring them all together. Diving on this Marine Medic group. Meanwhile, Army group moving up here towards the top left. Can he get there in time? Mutas are actually not paying attention to that. It seems like he just does not know. 
Yeah, he has no idea about that marine medic group going up there. So he's going to dive in here on the natural, thinking that this is all the marine medic that uh, Piano has. But he's going to be sadly mistaken. A lot of damage is going to ensue here as the marines stim up and run into this drone line. He's going to gun down as many as he can here right away, going after the hatchery. Stimming and hitting that hatchery as much as possible. One marine just kind of dancing around here right now. That's not good. Definitely want to... Um, Get as much DPS out here as possible. Can he get it? Oh, he does. Finishes that off. Small mistake here by Soma. It's going to be so punishing right now. And this is just the delicate balance of Zerg in this matchup. You can just see how hard this game and this matchup truly is, guys. Look at how well Soma has played this game out so far. And he missed, you know, six Marines and a Medic heading up towards top left. After clearing, clearing out everything, he missed that tiny little move out. Maybe his uh, overlord wasn't, like, maybe it should have been there instead. Or whatever, and bam, bam. I mean, now he's just in a terrible, terrible spot. He doesn't have that third gas mining. He's just got to sit here with four drones, not doing anything right now. He's lost a whole bunch of workers. He does have his hive on the way, however. Hive is going to be on time here. What can he do with that? He's got four lurkers making. And maybe he can make some miracles happen. With a bunch of lurkers and a you know big group of mutas. Maybe he can run over this marine medic group. And maybe the next marine medic group as it comes out. Alright, it looks like they're going to join up here. So probably won't be able to wipe that out. No lurkers up here in the top left in all of his tech. It's a little bit rough right now. His... Uh, Hydroden, his plus one armor is up there. Like, that is not a base that you can afford to lose right now. Absolutely not. Of course, in any situation, you can't really afford to lose uh, a base, but just saying. Oh my god, the medics. Oh, what a gift. What a gift there. The medics just kind of walking out and getting absolutely tore up. Marines are going to try and up this ramp, but... I think there's just a few too many meters here, and he is going to dive on top of this. He clears out everything. The drones are being transferred here. Finally, the mining can resume over in the top left. And Soma, I mean, he averts disaster, but he's still not in a great position. He just loses a lurker here for free. That is brutal. Spread and split here is fantastic as well for Piano. He really takes advantage very, very handily of that mistake from Soma. Soma. Dude, just the tiniest mistakes here and there. Piano is making so much out of them. Capitalizing insanely well on those little gimmies uh, that Soma is uh, allowing to happen. A lot of barracks coming in now. Double vessel production. We've got 54 SCVs, so full on macro here coming from this Terran player will shortly see him take an expansion here at the front as well, most likely. He's scanning around. He sees the main and the natural. Knows everything that's coming right now. And it'll be up to Soma to find a way onto a fourth base here before too long. And, you know, keep Oregon at bay. While he, you know, takes some time here to irradiate everything and start to do drops and all that. Uh, usually I like to say that the Terran player is like three to four chances. Um, to break open a Terran, or break open a Zerg before they can really start to take map control back. Um, and during that time, it's basically full map control to the Terran. And the Zerg can't really do anything. Uh, in this game, because of how it's gone so far, I think we're going to be more like four or five chances, really. You can come and try to bust a position. You can do a drop. You can... Uh, yeah, just, just do any mix of those two things over and over and over again, four or five times. And it's just up to someone to hold all of it. He's got to stay alive. Oh, God. Is he going to kill his own Hydroden? No. He's just got to stay alive here until his drone saturation gets up and that third base starts to mine. Or that fourth base starts to mine, excuse me. And then, you know, he, he might have 
some leeway, but four drop ships are gonna come over here. This is the attempt number one from Oregon. Where are these gonna be sent? It looks like he's sending them into the main base over here, but there are quite a few forces to, to intercept. We've got some scourge there. Well, that could be uh, painful if he decides to fly in that direction. So he instead alters his trajectory here, heading over towards the main base now. It's not looking too much better though in the main. The main is looking kind of scary right now. We've got the Defiler. It doesn't have Plague yet, but it has enough for the Dark Swarm. There's some Scourge over here, but oh my god, he finds the... Threads the Needle here, finds the hole between the Scourge, and actually flies right through. Oh my god, that is so painful. As a Zerg, that hurts my eyes. You know, Scourge are just some of the dumbest units of all time. And they absolutely do not connect with that. They do not try to pay attention to that at all. Um, they just sit there and do nothing while the drops just fly right by. And now they're going to fly right out. The Scourge is sitting there once again. Not chasing down these uh, pesky dropships, and that is such a pain. What a shame here for a Zerg player. There's just one lurk on this high ground. He could actually break this pretty easily. I think he's um, just taking what he can get for now. I think the spawning pool went down here. So we will have to see another spawning pool made, which is super annoying. Uh, yeah, I don't even see one right now. He doesn't have one. No spawning pool here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I guess we can't really afford anything right now. Anyway, he starts eight overlords. No, six overlords. Excuse me. He's got plenty of open supply. I think he thinks that he can't build anything because he doesn't have overlords. Um, <laughs> it starts burrow. That's interesting. I guess he's thinking, okay, there's probably going to be uh, an eraser trick to follow this up as the Terran player gets further and further ahead, right? They get... Um, more and more vessels they have lots of energy to just keep throwing down irradiates uh it's a good time to have burrow just in case they want to go for a play like that flying in now four dropships here into the top left main let's see what he can do there are all ultras out so if the ultras pop through here they should be able to hold everything um, ultras are not coming through here. The Nidus goes down. Everything falling apart right now. Oh my gosh. Massacre there. One Ultra in the back line. I don't know what he's doing right now. I guess he's trying to get to that Marine that's behind the mineral patches. Not able to make it happen. And GG. Wow. Okay. Organ. Double kill here. Takes out Soma and action. Pretty impressive stuff here. His TVZ looking strong. It was, of course, just down to some small mistakes by Soma that put him into such a bad position, but he followed it up beautifully to f sort of finish off Soma here. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be the, the thumbnail, but I feel like flying between all of those Scourge, kind of hilarious. Like, that is so... So cringe for the for a Zerg player, man. Like, you've got four Scourge set up like this right here. There's two Scourge here, two Scourge here, and four dropships fly right between. Oh my god, it's so painful. It is just so painful to witness. And you know that Oregon scanned there ahead of time. So he knew that there was Scourge there, but he decided anyway to just fly right through the center. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, guys. All right, we're going to jump into our next game. That is just too silly. Hey, guys. Neon Marble Rust is back with a new visual update and gameplay changes. If you haven't seen it before, this is a brand new RTS made by fans of Brood War and this channel. They are looking to recreate the old school RTS feel with an interesting twist. You will manage a complicated economy with many different resources using automation and upgrades as you bring together a strategy to overwhelm your opponent. The game is completely free to play, and my link to their stream page is in the description of the video. Thank you to everyone who supports me by downloading the game, and thank you to Neon Marble Rust for helping to keep the dream alive. Now back to the video. Oh, 
All right, effort being sent out here for the Zerg squad. Going up against Piano once again. Oregon here in the bottom left. We are on Eclipse. It's a map I haven't seen for quite some time, but certainly not long enough. I'm not a big fan of this map. Uh, it is a pain in the butt to play. I was pretty glad when it was finally out of the map pool, but it was it was in there for a long time, like maybe four seasons or something like that. I can't remember. Four, five, six? I, I don't know. Time has all melted together for me at this point. We've got Effort in this position here in the top right-hand corner. He's probably going to have to go for like a Hydra Defiler game, if I had to guess. If I was going to play on Eclipse today... Uh, with what I know now and the skills that I've learned and, you know, the games that I've played up to this point, the experiences I've had, I would say Hatchery 12 Hatch or or potentially 12 Pool or something like that if you're afraid of a uh, Bunker Rush, if you're afraid of the 8 Racks. Yeah, he's going to go for 11 Pool. So, 11 Pool... Hatchery uh, here, and then a third hatch, then gas. Uh, which sets you up for a pretty nice position, especially with a small ramp like the one over here at this base. You can set up just two sunken colonies there to defend, and then three here. So really, this map was what the map that actually made uh, Hydra's Defiler play not possible but it, it's it's what made it popular um, because people just had to learn it they just there's no other choice you cannot play a normal game uh with lurker on high ground and trying to get the filer and eventually ultra it's just not gonna happen uh, so it forced players to kind of go back into an older style which is the hydra defiler and make it work in the modern age and that's why we get to see it so much that's why three player maps are you know more balanced in uh, zvt in the modern age as well is because we have the ability to to do a strategy like that um we're not forced uh into that meta build any longer but there's there's options for the zerg so he's not actually gonna do the exact build that i was talking about before he is instead going to get a very fast pool here. Or a very fast um, layer here. Uh, I started that even before three minutes. So it's even faster than what we saw from Soma. And we'll see when the Mutalists pop here. I'm curious about this. I'm curious when this will actually pop out. One Ling on this high ground. Just trying to block right now. Uh, it seems like he actually had the block. Because the SCV didn't want to go up the ramp. But... Um, now it can probably loop around and come back into the main. No, he's not going to do that. Instead, he's going to check the third, which is also a solid strategy. If you know that there's no hatchery here, then you can kind of rule some things out. Um, that quick hatch play, uh, into, you know, three hatch before gas, that type of, that type of play. You can rule that out at least. And it's some sort of 1-1-1 here for Oregon. So he's reverting to this build that he did against Action. Uh, to take on Effort here. And we'll see if he goes for another, you know, Goliath play into Marine. I would love to see it. And see how Effort tries to deal with it. Uh, because Action did really struggle, you know. He had a hard time. The tank transition was really fast. And it came really, really hard. Had that upgrade already done. And the tanks were just very powerful. Speed and more vultures being produced. Spire. Getting there right now. Another hatch going to be added on in the front. This is typical when you know that your opponent is going for uh, a mech build. Especially one with vultures. Like you do want to, you know... Uh, get that third hatch, but maybe it's going to be hard to get it at a, a third base. You just really do need, like, drone production uh, at this point. Some extra larva is going to help out a lot. So he goes ahead and gets that. Vultures are out on the map. Is he going to go for a run-by? 
We don't have a uh, starport, so it's not like it can be some sort of drop. It feels like a run by, but this is too good of positioning here. Yeah, this positioning is way too good. Maybe you can just run down and around the back here. Is that what he's going to do? Okay, he's going to run to the back side of this. And you actually can't hit this with the sunken. So this is pretty decent. Good little spot here for Oregon. He's already gotten a couple of kills. I think three total. And so he's going to just harass the, the eggs here and wait for the mutas to come out. Now, unfortunately, quickly losing these two vultures as the mutas pop. But, you know, he delayed the mining. He got three kills. Not the worst thing in the world. More mutas is popping out here. More drones coming as well. A third base should be on the way here shortly. That's why this vulture is over here. He's looking for that drone and he will find it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, okay, he's gonna find it. That would have been kind of insane if he didn't end up didn't end up killing that there. Um, only five mutas here, and he's gonna come in and just fight the Goliaths. Which is a little bit crazy. Especially with a uh, a turret there kind of helping out as well. So the vulture does get that drone. Mutas will have to head back. Try to clear that out. And they will. They should be able to catch that. Oh, it's pretty good. The angle. Oh, the turnaround there. That vulture driver's head just snapped. The G-forces of that turn was insane. Absolutely broke the ankles on that uh, mutilus flock. Uh, but truly snapped his own driver's neck. Just kind of wild. Look at that little green man on there. Imagine riding that thing. That thing's like all motor. It's like sitting on a on a rocket. It's right between your legs. Anyway, Midas here are gonna fly into the main, and we shouldn't have range just yet. No, we do have range already. Okay. Yeah, range is done, but he's gonna block himself out of getting back here to help much. You can see like the buildings are really blocking him from going into this back area but he can sort of hit from here so he does drive away the mutas the mutas get a couple of kills you know two three kills not too bad but he actually kind of wants more and he's not really going to get it anymore because the uh glide number is getting kind of high we are going to go into hydra upgrades here massive hydra upgrades Drones are going to be transferred up towards the 12. This is the scary moment right now. We have to get these drones up there and they have to be mining. We cannot be allowing these to go down or we're going to be in a horrible position here in a moment. He spreads the mutas everywhere to try and take stock of where these vultures might be. But they're actually here in the middle of the map. Looks like he's going to spot them now. Um, they're going to go after these drones right now, but they're probably only get, going to get one, maybe two kills. Oh, Okay, one kill. That's pretty good. He cleared it up really, really reasonably well. And is that barracks transition? Look at that. All these Goliaths here, and there's a ton of barracks being added on. Do we have lurker aspect? I don't think so. I really don't. And we don't have attack either. Um, usually, if you're going to go Hydra Defiler, you want to go attack on your evolution chamber pretty quickly on. Uh, pretty, pretty early on. And, yeah, we just don't see it here. Instead, going for armor. He's going to fly through. Oh, this fly through is huge. He's going to see everything. He knows now exactly what he's up against. But the Goliaths are going to spread. And just make sure that they deal as much damage to the mutas on the way out as possible. That's his priority right now. He kills a bunch of mutas. And he has the marines on the way. We don't have Lurker Aspect, guys. Lurker Aspect is missing here. And it's just pure Muta being produced right now. I'm not sure about this for effort. Is he actually going to be able to take a fight with just pure Muta versus uh, Marines and Goliaths? It seems a little bit wild. But let's see what he can do. Scans come down here. He sees the natural. He sees the sunkins being made. 
Sunken's on high ground. Pretty strong against Goliath. That's for sure. Pure Mutilus production. Quite crazy. We've got plus one attack on the Goliaths. We've got plus one attack on the Marines. Burrow is coming out here now. An interesting choice. More gas is being added on in the top left as well. Right. Mutilus going after Marines here as they encroach out onto the map. But this attack is going to be very scary, guys. This is so much stuff. We need to bring all the Goliaths, though. These Goliaths here in the back, they cannot stay at home right now. Although, it looks like we're going to have a double Mutilus stab into the main. What is he going to go for with this stab? I'm really curious. It feels like he wants to go after... I don't really know. I'm going after the turrets right now, but... He's actually going to back out of here. Just trading a couple of mutas for some turret kills. Not the greatest. Now the army's in the middle of the map. Can he maybe, like, cut off some of these reinforcements? These straggling units. Could be good pickoffs here for effort. He is going to dive on top of some of the Goliaths now. But as soon as the Marines join the fight, you can see the mutas just have to run away. They can't just stay and fight uh, all these Marine Medic. Catching up some of these uh, reinforcing units. But the mutas are just melting right now. Oh my god. The, dude, the mutas are gone. He kills some of this, but that is a crazy good trade right now for Oregon. He killed so many mutas. Back at home, we got a lot of sunkins, though. Can he actually break through this many sunkins? I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, we don't have splash, but we've got a ton of anti-air here. With all of the Gol Goliaths and all these marines. It's going to be really hard to engage this. Now, he, pull he pulls everything together before going across the map one more time. But he's going to start to threaten the natural, I think. He doesn't know about top left, though. That is a big key here in this game. He has no idea, I think, about this top left. If he did, he would have head headed there immediately, I think. Uh, are we spotting it now? He's just scanning the natural and seeing how many sunkins are there. Did he finally scan? Uh, yes, he scanned top left. He knows. He knows top left now. Uh, there are actually... Lings underneath all of this, which are spotting out this uh, this army here. Mutas have that plus two armor, so they're really handling the, the marines well now. Looks like he's going to pull the trigger on an attack here into the natural. Can he break through and still have enough to fight the mutas at the end of that? Pulling the trigger. Can he get in here? Mutas are going to jump in on top of everything. Start to pile on. Dogpiling. Here onto the army of Piano Piano trying to disengage with the sunken colonies. There's only one left on two HP, but it's getting so many free shots here. More army making its way forward, but I think that effort has held. Effort gonna hang on here and continue to bust out seven mutilists at a time. He can do this because he's got all of that gas right now. He's got three, four, five gas geysers operating at the moment so nine more mutas in production he's gonna have so many mutas to work with it seems almost impossible for uh piano to take a fight um unless he can kill this base right now and then take a reasonable fight afterwards now don't allow your army to actually move uh, out of the way here. Okay, he's gonna take the fight before the base goes down. Can he actually clear this? I think this is good for Piano. Piano, he's fighting with just like almost pure Marine. Uh, and a ton of medics here. Medic for every single Marine in this group. Actually, two medics per Marine. A golden ratio here for these Marine dudes. More armies gonna come down here to try and help out. And I don't know. This is close, guys. What do you think? Can he actually hold this? That's quite a few mutas still left. He's targeting down the Marines one by one. But more reinforcements are parading their way up here. And the last of the Marines are going down. Medics here still having some energy. But they need to get back grouped up with some of these Marines if they want to have any sort of uh, like impact on this fight. More Marines arrive and the Medics are going to join up with them. I think he can break this, but just barely. 
Sunkins are being made here. Emergency Sunkins as more mutas pop forward. Oh my god, that's a lot more mutas. Is he gonna be able to break through? The Marines are bashing these mutas pretty hard, but you know what? I think that effort gonna hold on. He's just barely picking off enough here and reinforcing hard enough to the top left that Oregon is gonna have to turn away. There's still six mutas left and he's picking off these last few Goliaths. Dude, what a crazy back and forth game here. What a crazy tug of war in this top left hand corner where effort has just barely managed to hold with absolutely pure mutalist. What a Chad Zerg player. He does not blink. He just only makes mutas and he fights all of your anti-air with it. We have a radiate now though. This is the game changer guys and he's not making more Goliaths. He's just making vessels and barracks. Uh, barracks units, Marines here coming out. Can we get a really good irradiate on all of these mutas? He does get a pretty decent one here while the fight's going on. And man, that hurts. He does hurt these mutas quite badly, but he picks off the vessel. Vessel goes down. More sunkins over here in the top left. As effort realizes like that's his point of weakness. That's his most important base here. But with this many sunkins, can you even hope to break through? Another radiate gonna come down here shortly. More barracks have been added on. Piano doing a great job macroing through this. Effort now finally gonna start plus one armor. It's so late. This armor is so, I would almost prefer him to go like uh, queen, like greater spire. And just keep the upgrades going. He's got, you know, the, sp the Spire with plus two attack coming up. Maybe he will do that later. It's be because it's just going to take so long to get into anything worthwhile. Like have really anything to help this army, whether it be lurkers or ultras with actual armor. It's just not going to happen for so long. So let's see here. We're just going to fly into the natural. They really can't take a fight with this, especially now with the radiate coming. Oh, the radiate right on the bottom of the stack. It's dealing so much damage. Oh, man, that's so much damage. Holy crap. So many minutes just went down. Submarine's going to be pulled here into the main. A third base going to start now for Oregon. Chasing down these minutes with the vessels. Got to be careful with those, but... This is still... I would say, I mean, it's a pretty, still a pretty good game for effort. Like he's got, he's got five gases. <laughs> he's had them for a long time. He can make so many lurkers right now. It's crazy. Uh, his, just his upgrades really stink right now. They're so bad. They're so, so bad. Nearly 20 minutes in, he's not got plus one armor. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But uh, here we are. Gotta be careful with those vessels. Don't wanna... Okay, he just irradiates a Ling. That's not optimal for sure. Um, No other bases have been taken just yet. Looks like Effort thinking about taking bottom right. Of course, this third has been secured here. We're getting very low on minerals. In fact, mined out at the naturals, so... Uh, a fourth base will be on the menu here pretty soon. Siege tanks finally going to be made. Hydras are being produced. Lurkers, of course, are on the way. This is a big lurker army moving over here. Are we going to get that big counterattack into the natural? Well, we will force the uh, burrow of the lurkers here. And with the tank, I think he can stop this. All right, going to run northward now. Good stim. Should just back up now. Ooh, that hurt. That was a lot of units that just went down there. Great um, scan there. Lurkers are going to try to get up this ramp, I guess. No, they're actually going to back up because we've got a big force making its way over here to the natural. Dude, that is so many lurkers, but they're just getting wrecked right now. Oh, man. 
Just shoving through here. Defiler is not ready. And all the lurkers go down. The tanks are going to siege up here in range of the sunken colonies. He can back off. And just wait for the tanks to break through here while reinforcing this position. Three more tanks are going to come up. That's quite a lot of lurkers coming from behind. They are going to probably catch the reinforcements. Three more tanks. A big deal here for Organ, who's, you know... He's, he's not got that many tanks, man. He's trying to build up the tank number, but... Losing three tanks right now is a real painful... Uh... Loss here. Still hitting lurkers over in this position. The tanks all die. Here comes the Lurkers from behind. I don't think there's a stim here from Oregon. He does spread the Marines pretty well, but... I mean, these Lurkers look like they're going to clear out everything. And this is it. Oregon losing his entire army. That last kind of ditch hope here. To shut down five gas effort. The next time he tries to push, we will have Dark Swarm. We will have plus two armor. Almost assuredly. So this is a dire situation here now for Effort. He is in a really rough spot. Or not Effort, sorry. Oregon. Effort is feeling really nice right now. He can take this base down here. He can get Plague. More Defilers coming out. Spending his money well. Getting more hatcheries now. This is Effort's game to lose at this point. He is in the driver's seat here and he will have ultras out on the map relatively soon a bunch of lurkers get irradiated here but we've still got the dark swarm we still got one lurker healthy under that so he won't be broken just yet however Oregon gonna rotate here over to the third thanks on the low ground and the defiler is actually trapped right now which okay there we go he makes another egg so the defiler can get out oh targeting the defiler though can he get it oh oh oh, he does he does get it that is big irradiates can come down and just kill all the lurkers but the flank from behind pretty darn good here he's gonna get a bunch of vessels with these scourge and the link's gonna jump on top of these tanks once again oregon is just barely holding on by his fingernails here and it's likely his grip is about to slip. Ling's clearing that out. And plus two is now going to finish. Plus two armor, that is. Plus two attack has been done for a while here for Oregon. No plus three on the way. And no fourth base either. So he's just relying on one base economy. And trying to end this game here and now. Dark Swarm Plague should be available here soon as well. Getting a few consumes. More Dark Swarm way out at the front right now. Plague is done, but he doesn't have the energy upgrade yet. GG is called. Organ taps out. He just cannot get through this wall of effort. And yeah, I mean, that sneaky base in the top left-hand corner, it, didn't go, it went unscouted for long enough, I guess, that effort was able to take a big lead and overwhelm with pure muta you hardly see it anymore these days pure muta beating a terran player um when they've gone you know bio and uh, goliath i mean you don't even see that build very much anymore either goliath uh, marine build but finally effort takes out oregon and he starts to swing things back into his team's favor oh, i mean oregon Sat on top of that hill for enough time, I guess. It's time for effort to try to be the king here. And we're going to jump into our next game, guys. That's coming right up. Oh my god. He's doing it again. Are you serious? Is he actually going to do it? What is going on here? Effort? Hello? Hello? What is happening right now? He does it. What the heck is up with that? He kills his drone again. This is effort. Once more, I think, against Stork here. I'm not sure 100% that this is Stork. I'm pretty sure, though. 
that this is indeed your man Stork, and once again, effort killing his own drone here, just like in their first game together. That is insane. I actually can't believe he's doing this twice. I mean, he already won that last game, so... I mean, the confidence is just out of this world right now. Absolutely insane. Yeah, the other... No, there is no other um, Protoss player. So this is 100% Stork here. Starting out with a gateway first. Now he's going to be able to put on the early pressure. Looks like we're going to get a, a uh, pool first. Out of effort here. And we're playing on Ascension, which is a three-player map. Uh, very, very similar to Apocalypse. Um just like rotationally a little bit different but still actually pretty much the same honestly now that i think about it the only thing that's different is like this is a little bit bigger i guess and there's no like um entrance towards your natural instead it's like a wide singular high ground entrance and yeah, no high ground here there's not like three levels of high ground it's just Low ground and high ground, that's it. So, similar, but uh, an earlier edition of that three-player map style. Effort here. Starting this game from a pretty significant deficit. You really don't do this unless you are supremely confident in your ability to take down your opponent, like... If you're an S rank player, you're going to play against a C rank. Maybe you can you can get away with this. Or um, if you're an S rank, maybe you take on an A rank player. Maybe you, you feel like you can even get away with this. But just effort. Next level confidence here. Even against a consummate professional like Stork. Stork going to move around these links and head his Zealot in towards that main base. Let's see what kind of damage he can do. Because right now we've got effort. Getting a decent surround on top of this Zealot. We'll be pushing that back into the main base. Zealot making its way in here. He will produce some more Lings right now. He's got two more on the way. It's not enough to actually... Oh, wait. Four Lings total. So he will have enough to deal with that Zealot. Can he get this one in the mineral line right now? Oh, it's close. He does get it. Going after probes right now. Are we going to get a kill on this Zealot? No. No kills just yet. And the Zealot is getting quite low. Gets one kill. Was that a drone? It was. He killed one drone. But Effort killed, I think, a Probe and a Zealot so far. So, you know, he's doing well here. He's going to loop back around into the main base once again. Like this Zealot. Still with one kill. Will eventually be cleaned. And these Lings of Effort are going to stick around here in the main base while the Lings... Over at his own main are going to come across the map. And this is a very exposed pylon. We are going to have a third zealot out here before these can make it across. Okay, the third zealot is right there. Another probe goes down. Very interesting maneuvers here from effort to just have one zealot or one ling go in and to actually attack a probe. Um, while the other lings are still running around here. He will lose that one ling, but... Oh, can he build a pylon here? No, he can't block that with the pylon. Another Ling goes down, but the Lings here at the front are going to arrive. Two Zealots here to fight. Will he bring the rest uh, over to actually flank this? He will. Coming in for the flank. He's going to try and break these Zealots. They do pull out of that wall just in time. Keeping one Zealot alive on just 23 HP. The rest are going to slip in now. Making their way into the main base. This is some really crazy maneuvers here from Effort in this early game. A lot of nuance goes into a play like this. And so much has to be going right back at home. You can't miss overlords. You can't, uh, you know, miss drones. You have to keep your production going. Oh, the surround here is huge. Oh, man, that's so bad. Stork just losing control of that one zealot in the main mineral line. Now he's going to lose probes. He's sending four zealots across the map. But I think Effort is completely aware of this. He should just be building, like, another... Uh, three, four sets of lings while he gets as many kills as possible in this main. The control is insane with the speed. He's able to do so much damage here. He's forcing the probes to come off the line over and over and over again here to fight. 
He's picking off probes left and right. Here goes another probe. Two more probes. Three more probes. Meanwhile, Bell is making the way to the front here. He kills the ha uh, the Hydradan, which is not bad. Will he get one more probe? He does. One drone goes down. I think he gets another one. Okay, two drones do fall there, but so many probes have been lost at this point. I mean, the Hydradan kill was very nice, but is it really going to make up for the, you know, five, six, seven probes that were killed back at home? I'm not sure on that. Links are coming across the map. This Dragoon trying to kill the Overlord as quickly as possible, but he's got to get back in this wall here. Yeah, you, you can't be can't be leaving that wall open. All right. Um, okay. Get in the wall. Get in the wall. What are we doing? All right, he's going to go after the gateway here. Three Lings, I think, can hit this Dragoon. So Dragoon will fall pretty quickly. There it is. It goes down. Reaching back into the main base. He sends three Lings by over here into the main. And unfortunately, it goes back to Macroing or whatever else he was doing. So, oh, oh my gosh. Is he actually going to kill this? Kill his own cyber next core here. Maybe he is going to kill that. Maybe it's kind of blocking the mineral patch there. I think it is. A bit of a misplacement there. Uh, for Stork. He's going after it, trying to kill it. Uh, I think he's actually doing Stork a favor by hitting that. But um, Stork already has his buildings up. Like, he's already got the um, Citadel and Templar Archives and the Stargate. So he's fine with losing that. Uh, for now, as long as it fixes this mining. Yeah, look at that. T terrible mining. Oh my g g god, that's terrible. Alright, another probe goes down. My, my goodness. Yeah, the only thing you need this for anymore is like a plus one air attack or potentially um, your range upgrade on your dragons. That's really it. Saving that overlord there. Nicely done. When all said and done, I'd say that effort is still in a good spot here. Um, it's not as good as it could have been after losing two drones in the mineral line. Like, he's getting everything together, though. Evolution Chamber, Hydralis Den. He didn't decide to defend with Spire. That makes sense. If you go for, uh, you know, killing your own drone in the early game, it's probably not a good idea to go Spire after that. Uh, the timing is just too tight. He did lose an Overlord over here. And he's being cleared out of the rest of the map. The Dark Templar en route. We are going to have to be very careful here. Make sure that that DT can't slip by anywhere. Even pulling away the Ling. Uh, after the first one went down. Very nice play from Effort. Keeping his stuff alive for as long as possible. And we've got some Hydras here with some Overlords to defend that layer about to finish up and then we'll have speed so effort really can't do anything right now he can't really move um he's just gonna sit here and make drones drones and hydras and eventually get overlord speed hopefully that should be on the way here soon but he has a lot of other upgrades coming right now and he's focused very hard on droning here going up to 47 it's just for effort right now, there's really nothing else to do but get drones. You cannot move out if you don't have Overlord speed to get vision of the DTs. They will run you down no matter what. Shuttle going into the main. This is a great play by Stork. He knows that this is going to be a very late Overlord speed. Um, he's, he's figured this out and he knows that the DT can do massive damage in the main. Uh, that being the case. Now let's see how much damage this can get because he's flinging around with that um corsair group trying to get any kills he can on overlords here and he's forcing a lot of attention away from effort effort is losing so many drones right now the corsairs are being a complete nuisance he finally rotates his screen back to the main base and catches this te dark temple with now 10 kills a really fantastic move here from stork but will it be enough Will it be enough to take down Effort here? He had the advantage of one early drone being taken away from Effort. He's just killed 10 workers of Effort as well. But, I mean, can he close it out here? It's still going to be a hard slog against this incredible Zerg player. 
Running in for one more kill. Two more kills. Damn. That DT getting some immense damage here on the economy. Still 43 workers, though, for effort. He's not uh, in deep doo-doo just yet. He still has opportunities here to snipe Templar and get good trades. Forcing out an early storm is very nice. Not taking damage, even nicer. Coming up from behind here. Now he can't really get up on top of this with the ramp there. Oof, that was bad. He really walked in on that one. Uh, but there are more angles that we could be taking here to try and cut off these units. Now, coming through this really tight area, this is a good play by Stork. He's found a location where it's going to be super hard to spread and defend properly here with just pure Hydra against this number of Zealots and Storm. You're not going to have the greatest time. Hydras are coming up from behind this. And Hydras are here. Drones have been pulled prematurely. Good dodge on that storm. Another storm comes down. Another great dodge here. He makes an Archon. He has one more storm remaining. Can he get the great one? The money storm here at the end. Lurkers do finish. And it looks like we're just going to barely hold. But storms come in. Clean up a lot of these drones and Hydras on the backside. A lot of Templar are going to go down on the retreat here though. So still 47 workers, wow. And seven more in production. So he's gonna go right up to 50 and he started Ventral Sacks. This is interesting. I think we're gonna see a fourth come down for effort and he's gonna gear up for a huge drop into the main, which could be a crazy, crazy blow to Stork who doesn't have uh, an Observer yet. There's the first Observer just now popping out. He's going to have to bring it forward here because Lurkers are going to be on his high ground in just a moment. They're running straight up on top of this. Um, this could actually be a little bit bad for Effort because he's in range of the cannons. And now there's an Observer here as well. So, I mean, he takes a pretty good trade with the Lurkers killing off a lot of these Zealots. But now the Hydras really can't do anything. They need to back off. Uh, it's just similar to... Uh, Apocalypse holding this high ground over the Protoss third base is very strong, but it's not as strong as on Apocalypse, right? If you hold this area, there's still this little gap here, and there's still this big gap going around this direction. Um, so, you know, just getting the uh, containment play is not going to uh, be a, a victory condition here. It's just kind of a, a good spot to fight against the Protoss player. It gives you a good staging ground. And a, a nice defensive position to take some good fights. Maybe get some good trades. 108 supply to 108. Wow. Effort is another level. The aliens are showing off some incredible mic or incredible macro here. Excuse me. Pumping out so many Hydras. And this is just six hatchery. It's not like he's got a seventh, eighth hatchery or anything like that. He is just consistently hitting his macro rounds and pumping out drones like mad. He's at 53 and going for a drop right now. He's baited the army uh, north here. And he's going in for the drop right as everything is kind of moving forward right now for Stork. He's not in a good position to immediately counterattack and kill any bases of effort. Um, but he's far enough away right now that he can't easily come back here and save any of these buildings. So we're going to target the Templar Archives, of course. That's a big target here in the main. If you can kill the Templar Archives and the Citadel and the Cybernetus Court, my god, does it take a long time to get Templar uh, production going once again. He's actually going to pick up and leave. That's just how good effort is. He's like, yeah, I did enough. Let's go back. Oh, let's drop actually these Hydras and kill this one Dragoon. That's worth it. Um, okay. Well, he didn't get the dragon, but you know what I'm talking about. He's just very, very good. Oh, a drop into the main, but that's going to be caught here. The De Dark Templar will be picked off. Shuttle here, heading back home. Unsuccessful. 62 drones now. So I think all that we need to see is just a, a hold here from effort. He's coming back in. Oh my goodness. He's coming back in. And he's killing the pylon. Oh, the pylon's going to go down. Oh, man. It's poor Stork. Poor, poor Stork right now. Lurkers here on high ground are going to set up and get into position right now. Uh, there will be Templar here shortly, so he could potentially break through this. 
but way more lurkers are coming up a lot of sunken colonies are being made right now and he's just killing everything he's he's just gonna kill everything in the main there's just not gonna be anything left he's going after the templar trying to snipe them down as this uh engagement occurs if he can snipe the two observers he wins uh he wins 100 percent snipe the observer get it 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 oh my god it gets away with just 12 hp that is so big um, the main base is just getting absolutely ravaged. Ho ho, the storm there. Doing a lot of damage to these lurkers. Lurkers are trying to get into position to kind of help out here. Uh, I just can't imagine this actually working though for, uh, Sork, who's lost everything else. He's got, he's got nothing. He's got nothing in his main. His natural is getting killed right now. Um, there's some DTs popping out, but there's so many hydras here. And eventually the rallies will kill everything. Eventually the rallies will clear out everything. That's a great storm. And there's still quite a few dragoons. Maybe you can kill, uh, you know, sunken, maybe a hatchery. Maybe even this hatchery as well. But I think the writing's on the wall here. There's just no gateways left. Yeah. Yeah, this is rough. Poor Stork, man. He's getting styled on multiple times this series by effort. Ever gonna finally surround and, and finish this off. He's running back into a corner that's that's not an escape route. There are two sunkens over here and a bunch of hydras waiting. And GG is finally called. The last stand of Protoss here at the bottom center gets shut down. Wow, beautifully done here by Effort Man. You gotta respect it. Holy. Killing his own drone and then taking a, a game like this off of Stork just drop ships and uh yeah just just overlord drops and just excellent decision making all the way through insane macro this guy was so strong in 2021 man it is crazy no wonder he was able to take down flash in the asl finals this guy was just next level crazy crazy good all right let's jump into our next game another win here on the board for team zerg All right, here we go. Effort is now the king of the castle. The king on the hill, if you will. Here in the yellow. Sharp, sharp down in the bottom right. In the white. And it's going to be tough for Sharp to take this guy down. I don't know if he's got what it takes. Effort, I mean, he's the perfect man to be on the top of the hill right now for the Zerg squad. Uh, he is so formidable, as you guys could see there from that last game. Let's take a look at the map. It's called Hidden Track. We saw it in the last round, but I just wanted to remind you guys about it. It's uh, quite a wild map. It was in the map pool um, for uh, like one season, I guess, on, on ladder, if I remember correctly. And yeah, it's just a fun map. Look at these kind of weird low ground bases was the big key part of this map. And also the double ramps outside the natural. Uh, kind of an interesting one. It was pretty balanced, I thought. It wasn't it wasn't too bad. I think Terran was a little bit favored with these long uh, kind of ridge lines where you could set up tanks and kind of hit bases like this. Usually whenever uh, setups are like that, um, becomes a little bit Terran favored, but you know, we've still got great locations to take bases here as a Zerg player. And look at this. He's taking his natural 12 hatch here from effort, scouting out the map. And he's going to see right away where Sharp is with that little Mickey Mouse wall here at the front. Sharp going to be setting up here for who knows what kind of game. I'm not sure. No gas. Just yet. But that can't rule out the possibility of mech here later on. Or a Valkyrie build or who knows what else. Sharp is kind of a madman. And he was no different back in 2021. He was still quite a crazy guy. Maybe not as strong as he is today. But he'll pull out some weird stuff on you. He'll pull out some mech stuff on you. He'll do some, do some wild builds against you. Um, of course, the Vulture, always his specialty. 
But I don't think that's what we're going to see here. I'm not sure, but it feels like a pretty normal build. Here for sharp. I'm going to steal the gas. See, this is what I'm talking about, guys. Stealing the gas, that is not a typical maneuver. But he's going to force the gas to be taken here at the natural instead. That really doesn't make much of a difference for someone like Effort. It slowed down his gas by maybe 10 seconds. Which, you know, I guess that slows down your Mutilus timing by 10 seconds, right? If your gas is slowed by that much? Maybe worth it. I'm not sure. Back at home, you know, just chugging along here. He's going to get an engineer engineering bay. Immediately, we can see that he's going for a plus one. So, plus one marine timing. Maybe go to four or five racks. I'm not sure here. Um, We'll see what... Uh, and when he actually wants to get that tech online. Effort. Feeling pretty good with the 2.5 hatch going down. He's going to have a lot of macro to work with. Or was this a, was this a 3 hatch before gas? I'm not sure. It feels... I, I think it was a 2.5, but I'm not 100% on that. After getting delayed there, he might have thrown that down. Wasn't fully paying attention to that timing. Anyway, regardless, we're not going to have the two racks uh, meta timing here for Sharp coming across the map. He's going to get a little bit of a later barracks after he starts the plus one. And he's going to get the academy, of course. Stim's going to come up here, and the marine count is very low. This is typical of this type of build. What we're looking at right here with the early plus one. You're not going to have a whole lot of marines to just push across the map at five minutes. You can see here, with a two racks play, you would have eight marines to ten marines with two medics at this point right now to be moving out. Just not the case with this build. Instead, he's going to have a much stronger early game. Um, just not as sharp of a timing, no pun intended. Three, four, five racks. So I was kind of calling it there earlier. The five racks play with uh, plus one upgrade here. This is going to push out around. Uh, he doesn't even need to really push out, I guess. He's just going to sit here and wait. No real reason to go out on the map right now. A sunken was made. Which is a little bit rough for effort. But uh, I guess he felt like he needed to, to throw that down. Uh, would be better to just have like maximum number of mutas to spawn here. Uh, as this finishes. But, you know, it is what it is. A little bit of a safety play there from Effort. And the 5 Rex is going to be in full force here in a moment. Uh, no turrets just yet, but he did scan, so he should know that he needs turrets here soon. Going to start building turrets in a moment. And then push out with this plus one Medic Marine. It's so close right now. He's going to hit this timing right as all the upgrades finish. Gonna start to push across the map, and this is a very scary force right now. Truly frightening. The uh, force of effort right here. Or, sorry, the force of sharp. Um, effort, for his part, Muta's finally popping out pretty late. 6 minute 30. Maybe it was a 3 hatch before gas. Uh, maybe I read that a little bit wrong. Two turrets are ready, but this is a lot of Muta's. He can really dive in. Yeah, he's going to go for a deep dive here. And what will Sharp do? Going to try and surround this. Going to do his best to get on top of this army. All right, the scan there at the end. He will get the Overlord at least. But I think it's just about time to push. Everything going to gather back together. A factory has started. Effort going to come back in once again. But I don't think the Sharp turns around this time. He is just going to go. I'm um, surprised, actually, to see him kind of turn around right now. He has so many Marine Medic. He's got a really big army with the plus one done. It's going to be really hard to handle. 
Um, adding on two more sunken colonies, he, he realizes how scary this can be. Uh, if that marine medic ball reaches his natural. So effort going to prepare for that. He's got lurker aspect on the way. A little bit of kiting here. With the mutas. Kind of missed a shot there. Could have gotten a few more kills. The marines making their way closer and closer to the natural. Now it's impossible for the mutas to break away from this marine medic group. They have to trail it. Uh, in case it decides to just go in on that. Uh, sunken colony line. Wow getting two medics here. There's only two medics left. Uh Oh This is not a good ratio right now for the The Terran Marines man, this is really feels bad man scenario at this point um, He's gonna pull back to see if he can bait the the mutas in to to try and uh, Back away from this marine medic group and then go into the natural but there's lurkers finishing and with four, five sunken colonies and lurkers, you're just not going to be able to get in there. And that is a fact. Time to just sit and chill and try to get some more tech going here. He will get into his starport tech in just a moment. Marine medic gear over at the natural. In a good formation with uh, backup with uh, extra units here to reinforce. So... Mutas are now completely free to just go on a rampage. They're going to start to pick off SCVs, building buildings, SCVs in the mineral line. As much damage as potentially is possible because there's just no way at this moment for Sharp to deal any damage. He can't go in. The Lurker defense is ready. We got Lurkers up here at the top left. This is Effort's moment to shine. He can try and deal as much damage as he feels necessary as he wants to. And behind this, he's going to have his upgrades rolling. He's going to have his Defiler Mound on the way. And Defilers will be coming out here shortly. This is going to be a big game pretty soon here, guys. Uh, because it doesn't seem like Sharp's going to break anything. He's going to have a couple of opportunities here. You no, know, two, three opportunities to try and break Effort. While Effort is sitting here and looking towards grabbing a fourth base. But... Yeah, like I say, there's some time. There's some time that Effort's just going to be droning hard. And getting into a really good macro position. You can see his drone count already very high. All his upgrades are rolling right now. Looks like he hasn't gotten... Okay, there it is. Consume is now in the production tab. He's sharking around looking for small groups of units that are just not well defended. He does not have any Scourge with this army. He's got a great spread of Lings down here and some Scourge down here. But he doesn't have the opportunity to actually snipe uh, vessels right now. The vessels are going to make their way up to the top left. And try to get a couple of Radiates here and make an opportunity to break through. But there's a Nidus already done. So that's probably not going to end up working. Just pure Vessels and Marine Medic on the way right now. He's going to add on a CC and more barracks but there's no like crazy curveball that's going to be thrown at effort at least not yet oh does he get both no oh he did he did never mind got two irradiates off there that's good four already or four lurkers now on top of this hill and a base is going to be taken in the top right plague is now on the way defiler here in the natural we do need to con continue to hold this area very important that we hold this more vessels coming out marines going to be clearing out some stuff here down at the bottom center some lings maybe some some scourge potentially oh, they are right there mute is here gonna try to get rid of this factory but we're in a bit of a downtime right now where no, neither player is going to do too much. I think this game is going to be about Sharp trying to deny the fourth while taking four bases of his own. He's already got the four bases almost going here. He just needs to land and send SCVs to the top right. And he's in a good position to just hold this bottom, the bottom of this ramp. So let's see what effort can do. 
Effort needs to get out of this position. He needs to get on the map. Create some threats. And kill that army that's kind of hiding out underneath his uh, fourth base there. His potential fourth base. Uh, Plague does come down. Irradiate to follow. Lings on mass here, but there's so many Marines ready uh, at this fourth base. Another plague, perhaps? No. No more plagues here just yet. And the bases are starting to come online. Whoa, where are we flying? Uh, the CC kind of overshot here a little bit. We'll be flying back here pretty soon. I should imagine. It's like sharp. Still trying to hold on to that fourth. Trying to deny that as best he can. We should see vessels come up to radiate that soon. Looks like they will come forward. Small groups of... Lings and Lurkers making their way over to the front of the base. There's no... Um, extra defensive position here. So Lurkers are actually going to make their way right up into the natural. How many workers is he going to kill here? Workers are starting to go down. A lot of Marines are falling as well. Now the Lurker can get back to focusing there on that SCV line. Blowing everything away now. More Marines going to pop out and Army is making its way back here. But during this chaos, Effort manages to take his fourth. Key move here from Effort. Ooh, Ling's getting absolutely roasted. Roasted here. Oof. That's unfortunate. Bit of mismanagement there from Sharp. Gonna lose all those units. Other base over here in the top right. Can still hold off for a little bit longer. Uh, with that bunker and all those Marines. He should be okay. Burrow is coming out right now. Some Marines over here just kind of holding down the fort right now. This is gonna be a crazy game, guys. I'm looking forward to this. We're actually gonna get a big game here, it looks like. Uh, Sharp versus Effort. Who's going to be able to turn the tides here? Who's going to be able to take an advantage? It feels very even right now. Both players. Close to 55 workers. We are going to get that eraser trick. But Burrow, as I said earlier, is done. So, a great answer to that. Oh, God. Is he going to kill his own Marines with this? Ah, the Marines. Oh, <laughs> you never see that. That's kind of a new one. Accidentally uh, erasering his own Marines. A little bit unfortunate. But getting a lot of great high quality irradiates here. And backing away with the vessels as well to keep them alive. This base not really mining just yet. Sharp's got a lot to deal with. He's got a lot on his plate right now. Trying to dodge out some of these uh, Dark Swarms. And plagues. Does eat a pretty big one there. Not the huge not the hugest plague, but uh still is painful. Just streams of marines coming out here right now. Second factory, okay. Or no, this is the factory that replaced the burning factory, I think. No, one factory I think went down. He needs another uh starport, I believe, at this point. Ultras are starting to come out here. Four armor ultras. Ling's making their way to the top right. Those are sacrificial. Ultras making their way over to the natural. You do not want to waste your first group of ultras. But it's feeling a little bit wasteful what Effort is doing right now. He's running into the natural. And a lot of these... Uh, the ultras not really actually attacking. They're kind of more so... Just running around in circles. What are we at right now? Three damage already. And a BC comes out here. Ultra's making the way to the top right. Lings as well. Do we have a Defiler? No, we do not. So he's not going to break this if he doesn't have Defiler. More Marines in all the bunkers as well. Done a really good job this game of making sure that the bunkers are full. Small army, bits of army moving around. This is actually such a good commando little hit force here. He actually, he killed a critical uh, defiler. 
at a very critical moment with that small little force of like four marines that's going to prevent him from actually holding this base and some ultras are going to make their way over to this area hopping in the bunker here with some SCVs ready to block or potentially to repair seems like these bunkers are going to go down quite quickly and the SCVs will have to abandon ship but eventually he will get marines down here to clear this out and it's honestly not a bad trade just a couple of bunkers a couple of SCVs maybe a little lost mining time um for like three ultras and a whole bunch of lings not bad at all he's gonna get back to this mining here very soon and meanwhile effort is trying to take bases around the map he's looking for them but he can't really seem to hold any of them firebat and marines getting in here to deal with this base at 12 o'clock some vessels will fall the first few vessels i've seen go down actually and marines are holding their ground but they haven't met the five armor ultralisk just yet these ultras are ready to play here in just a few more seconds as that fifth armor upgrade finishes things get really scary for the zerg player or for the terran player excuse me nice job with the battle cruisers though just sending them out onto the map getting rid of ultras here and there just being a general nuisance honestly science vessels being sent over here you can't really do anything to get rid of the the drone you can't really irradiate it and hope for that to do anything looks like this ultra is going to get picked off here that dark storm should end very soon just small amounts of ultras being sent in over and over again is not going to pay off when it comes to breaking this upper right corner marines are clearing this out pretty darn well medics on the ramp trying to block out these marines target fire on some of these ultras trying to pick off as many as he can it's like this will get surrounded and killed but i don't see any scourge to help clear out these vessels a lot of units moving through the middle of the map right now uh-oh bunkers with nothing inside of them unfortunate there because that base is going to get shut down now oh this is rough ultras here on the right hand side have been completely forgotten about and battle cruisers are going to kill them for free just a, a lift over here at the center right and dude effort is really falling apart right now he's not putting in the greatest game i'll, I'll be honest sharp is uh doing outdoing him a little bit i have to say um he's trying to get this base online but sharp just keeps going after it nice yamato cannon to finish off that defiler and he's probably going to be able to kill this base no not enough marine medic to actually finish that off and with this base down i guess he's only on uh one base now pretty much i don't have a lot of minerals here so it's at least going to be one base very soon trying to break through this area can he actually get in here one plague goes down a D matrix on a fire bat would be insane right now. It'd be so good. Target down the hatchery. Can he get it? It looks like he will. That hatchery goes down. And he can just back away once again. Confident, happy that he denied that fifth base. And effort is starting to run dry. 21 uh, minute mark has been reached. And that's really the breaking point here. That's when the gases start to be depleted. We've got no gas no gas and a thousand gas here we have to get this online or this either one doesn't matter which but we have to get one of them up and operational now or we're just going to get smothered out of this game here as action he's kind of or as effort excuse me he's kind of uh interestingly switching over to complete hydra mode now hydra defiler maybe the follow-up he does still have some ultras in production but it's a good change i like it we're getting scrappy we're running out of gas it's a lot easier to pump out hydras than it is to pump out ultras right now a single drop ship is going to be made here by sharp sharp in the modern day is all about the drops in this matchup but here he didn't really utilize them too much 
has been very conservative with building any sort of drops just getting into directly uh vessels and then right on into battle cruisers shortly after we should be able to see some irradiates and maybe even a yamato cannon go down um on these defilers but for now he's just gonna be holding strong here at the bridges lings again just running into their death barely doing dealing even a scratch of damage to those bunkers not the most successful trades here of course oh man that sucks losing a bunch of vessels there i guess he didn't realize that there was hydras underneath that cloud uh when he was sending them in and effort gets this base and he gets this base oh battlecruiser was here because he kills it he kills the hatchery here at the center left that is huge actually that is so big right now i can't believe he actually got that hatchery that is that is massive bcs are doing work right now absolute work very very impressive stuff here and a drop gonna come in he just needs to kill this base that's all he needs to do just deny this base like one more time and he should be able to win this game sharp is on the cusp of victory here guys can he make it happen diving in on this final base some hydras are gonna come up oh the scourge are coming in but they're just not gonna be able to make their connections do we have any uh defilers with this army no it's just pure hydra and ling right now but it's going to be enough to at least shove things back for a moment hydra's here getting irradiated you know it's a desperate situation for the zerg when the hydras are getting irradiated and all the links get cleared up here the fire bats coming in clutch another base goes down and effort is just about down and out well he's starting to transfer drones and long distance mine all over the map here whereas sharp has two bases fully mining he's feeling very good for the 60 supply advantage we got marines and medics heading over here to the center right to start picking off these drones that are long distance mining here from the natural and that drone count that beautiful beautiful drone count that all effort worked so hard to uh, achieve has just gone out the window here lings lurkers or lings hydras even a few ultras mixed in gonna come down here and actually connect onto this group of marine medic pretty handily cleaning that out <clears throat> excuse me bit of a long day of games here guys everything has been cleared really nice job there and he will get this gas online that is everything right now he needed this so desperately so desperately he finally gets some gas income and can start to counterattack once again. I really can't believe he's been sending lings up here this whole game. And just losing them over and over and over again. That is wild to me. I, I swear there's been like four uh, dozen lings have just been sent up there. Just to die. A drop going to come in. Looks like he wants to hit center left. Hydras and defilers are ready for that though. And the base gets denied. Although we don't really need a base right now. It's not necessary. Uh, one vessel goes down, but a drop is going to get off here. Going after the Defiler is a great choice. Hopping underneath the Dark Swarm. Uh, it would be nice if you could hit like a building uh, while this is going on, but you can't really do it right now. Some Irradiates going down on the Hydras here. Uh, the... Uh, of overlord getting irradiated as well a lot of damage but ultimately the marines will be cleaned marines making their way over here the reinforcements coming towards the center right or center left big plague there doing some mean work i'm gonna shove these marines back once again and one lurker here my goodness effort is just he's so good at holding on it's crazy He's actually just hanging on by the skin of his teeth right now. It's just wild. We'll throw down some more radiates. It's just getting so bad. The amount of irradiates we're seeing right now. That is so many. And Sharp is about to push into this. I think he's got it, guys. 
I think he's got a 50 supply advantage. Efforts done a great job of hanging on throughout all this, but oh my, oh man. Every Ling here getting annihilated. And this base will finally fall. Dude. What a rough game here for effort. Just not able to put it together. Sharp bringing out his best performance here to take down effort and knock him off this hill. We've got one defiler coming up here to the top right. He's looking for a dark swarm here on this high ground to just deal with these two bunkers with just pure lings and then try to take out this base. But I mean, we still got mining here and we've still got a 60, no 90 supply advantage now. So it's really kind of hopeless at this point. One ultra here in the middle of the map. I'm not sure what that's doing there. Um, Hydra over here as well. Kind of funny. SCVs are going to be pulled, but we're now out of gas mining here at the third. The fourth is getting low as well. So we're on like, you know, 1.5 gases or something like that. It's pretty bad. Another try to take this base and it's given him a little bit of hope here effort. That he can still win this game because he killed this base over here. But I tell you what, it's just, it's nearly hopeless. 90 supply, as I said, advantage. 37 workers. They're all going to be sent to the center left to try and secure that base. Uh, to try and get this mining going once again. But the chances are slim to none. Look at that army. Yikes, that's so many vessels. 11 vessels. There's 11 irradiates ready right now. I mean, we've, we've only got like eight hydras. Oh man, that's rough. One ultra gonna make its way forward here. Uh, there's an irradiate for every single unit. It can irradiate every uh, drone. You can irradiate every single ling. Just does not matter at this point. Army making its way over here to the center left once again. And there goes Effort. He leaves the game. Sharp takes him out. Steals the hill back for the Terran Proda squad. Effort. He seemed so dominant. He felt very, very good in this game. But Sharp just solid, solid macro. Five racks plus one. Able to take on Effort in a late game situation. Not many people can boast that they're capable of doing what Sharp just did in this game. But there you have it, guys. He takes them down, gives more hope for the B squad, for the team two here, the Terran Protoss lineup of this week of Pro League. Guys, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to cut this video into another piece here. will be another part coming out this weekend. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in that next one.